What's going on, my beautiful people from YouTube? Let's talk about the Helium Network. More specifically, let's talk about a miner. I uh, promise you guys a follow-up video on a Milesite miner, and that's what this is. We're gonna do a little giveaway of a hundred bucks worth of agency or whatever it is. It's worth a lot more than when I talked about it on the video last time, but um, you got, wait, 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 wasn't it 50? No, it's a hundred if you guys actually watch the full video. Anyhow, so that's point number one. Point number two, we're gonna go over tips and tricks in regards to the Milesite unit, because there's a ton of cool stuff that you guys can actually take advantage of with this unit, and people don't even know. Third, um, I guess it's a highlight feature. You can actually do fast sync with the mouse site units, which is actually pretty darn cool because nobody likes to wait three days to get their you know units synced up. So we are going to do that. But first, we are going to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm because that's why I can make videos and have you guys watch it and see what's going on and give you insights into what's going on in crypto. I have a bunch of different projects actually um, that I've been talking to, trying to get you guys a little bit more insight into different passive income opportunities and. I guess money talks, right? So let's see if I can get you guys to learn about a few more new projects. But in the meanwhile, let's since money talks, let me get you guys that free money. Share my screen. There you go. So this is the last video. I told you guys to go ahead and comment. Um, what was it that I asked you guys to comment? Action giveaway. That's right. Uh, on the video. But I also at the very end of the video, I told you if you commented and you let me know if you were more excited about the Bobcat or the Sense Cap, I would go ahead and actually double the winning prize from 50 to 100 bucks. So here we have it, action giveaway. I'm gonna go ahead and get YouTube comments. This thing's gonna load. All right, 120 comments. So odds are pretty good. Let me go ahead and scroll down and pick a random winner. All right, let's see what we get. Ooh, Bobcats has some problems. Extra RAM, dashboard, sense gap, yeah. Tiberius Burritz. Bur -bur Herbacy, and I'm not good at this. Anyway, head over to the Discord. I'll put the link down below. That way you can go over there, open and shuffle the ticket, and I will get you your free 100 bucks worth of, you let me know the token. Um, got no problems. Yo, pick and choose, we'll, we'll, we'll sort it out. But yeah, um, I guess you can say that it pays to watch Action Crypto, right? Um, now, if you don't have a mouse site unit, I will tell you that um, Fast Manners does have them in stock. So I was just looking at it right now. They do have the US version at least, in stock, I don't know how many units they have. They've been like quietly just adding stock here and there. Uh, and if you use the coupon code ACTION, you actually get a discount off of this unit. They also have a bunch of stuff that's actually hidden here, like accessories. Uh, let me see if it's down here. Nope, they should add accessories to this page. I should let them know. But like they have a bunch of things like L3 Miners, uh, Gold Shell Mini Doge, Mech X Pro, but Helium accessories. Why am I going into this side tangent? But anyway, um, they got all kinds of LMR cables that you can get as well as antennas. The antennas I stink in love and I actually have one right on this unit. I'll show you guys. Um, anyway, I, I digress. Let me talk about tips and tricks because that's point number two. Um, there are some really cool things with the mouse site unit that people don't always talk about. And I think it's important for me to at least share with you guys um, what I like about it. And I've gotten a little bit of feedback, I guess you can say, in regards to this unit, um, the way that I've been using it. Um, I posted a picture on Twitter where my unit was sitting just like this. And somebody's like, oh, Action, what are you doing? You're not following the spec sheet as far as how you should mount it. I know I'm not following the spec sheets as I should mount it, whatever it says there, but do you always follow the rules? Do you always follow exactly what people say to do? I don't, I try to break things. And then if it breaks, I'll let you know. If it works, I also let you know. So it works, first and foremost. You can mount the unit like this, and I have had zero problems. I actually had some rain, and I had no issues with the unit whatsoever. Uh, it was a temporary fix uh, where I placed this guy. Um, you know, ideally, and that's the other thing I actually want to tell you guys: when you're mounting this unit, use the use the bracket, and I'll talk about the bracket in a second. But um, make sure that you're actually mounting the antenna as well. So don't just like put the unit on the bracket and leave the antenna as is. If you get a lot of wind, if you put this up high, the wind is gonna like make this thing wobble, and it could actually damage the connection right there. That's my only feedback as far as like placing it that way. But um, take advantage of the stuff that's already in your little kit here, because the, the, the mount they provide you with is actually really, really good. Um, this thing fits right in. So I just took the back. I don't know why I did that right now, but yeah, I'll show you. Um, placing this unit is super, super easy um, with the bracket that comes included. So you just attach the bracket and like it's there. Um, up here, you have a screw. Um, use the screws that they gave you because they actually fit right. So this screw here is actually a grounding screw as well. So it does work for like a dual function. Um, I do enjoy this thing a lot. Now, with my unit, um, I have more than one internet connection at, at place and um, I have access to multiple hexes 
for my location. And where I'm placing this guy, I don't have a way of getting a wired connection out there. However, my Wi-Fi is really, really good reaching out there. But I still decided to actually just run a Cat6 cable right to my unit. The reason I did that is because I'm using a little injector, it's a little TP-Link injector. That way I don't have to have a power brick sitting on the pole. Because if you think about it, my the pole that I'm putting this thing on is like over 20 feet. And I don't want like halfway to have that power adapter dangling over there. So instead what I opted for was to use a Cat5 cable, Cat5, Cat6 cable, this is what I'm using. You get used to saying Cat5, this is what happens when you're old. Um, and the Cat6 you know, cable, the let's just say the RJ45 connection is actually powering a unit. <laughs> to sound super douchey right there um so i'm getting power right over the ethernet it's to me the best way to go about doing this because there is no risk of me just dangling stuff up there and i can have a pretty long um ethernet cable without having to worry about it that's like i think a, a big highlight that some people don't realize is actually even um possible um something else in regards to mounting this thing i know that the the diagrams they instruct you to mount this thing sideways couple of reasons that they tell you to do that first the antenna that comes with the unit actually put it away it's not here um it actually has a 90 degree turn so the antenna sticks up um for the unit i don't like that for a couple of reasons first the unit sits right next to it and it's like all right so you're going to block a little bit of the signal but more than that i'm not going to use a stock antenna for my location it just doesn't make sense it can make sense for some but not all so i have an 8 dbi antenna here and this is a, this is a little thick thick little guy um the quality on these antennas are awesome. And I'm not gonna mount this thing sideways. I'm gonna put my antenna like this. It makes absolutely no sense. So I am mounting my antenna this way. Now I can see some concerns in regards to water buildup around this area on the actual, you know, the the um, end plug, but it's okay. Like worst case scenario, I, I'm gonna leave it as is, not gonna do it right now, but you know, I'll go back and I'm gonna put a little, just a little sliver of silicone right on the bottom there, um, just to see if it makes a difference at all. But I don't foresee this being a problem, especially being rated IP65. Like you can't have an IP65 rated unit, any kind of unit, doesn't matter what it is. I mean, it could be like IP, you know, IP65 bubble gum and like not be able to withstand a little bit of water on here. So this should be fine. Um, the connection here is actually super, super solid. So um, I don't see any problems. Worst case scenario, yeah, I put a little silicone, but if you look at the back of the unit, like right over here, and here's the case. It is completely sealed. My, my little Paw Patrol um, band-aids coming off, but um, it's completely sealed. So if you're if you're tightening this right, you're not going to have any water issues. Like there's nothing for you to worry about. I can see why maybe you shouldn't mount this unit upside down where the water can actually get into this portion and get stuck where the cable comes in. So getting stuck in there. But if you're mounting it like nope, like this, you should be absolutely fine with this unit. Should be no problem whatsoever. So um, yeah, so it's got power. I mean, it's on right now. Um, and why did I just take antenna off? Man, I'm gonna get so much trouble for doing this on the internet. Guys, don't, 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 don't. I got it. I shouldn't have done that. I, was, I wasn't thinking. Anyway, um, hopefully it didn't die and didn't kill the, the card, but. Um, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, let's talk about FastSync. And um, before I talk about FastSync, let me go ahead and share my screen. Honestly, I got a new logo and I try to be clever and tweeted at them saying, yo, can I get a new unit so I can have the new, new logo? They're like, yeah, you can have the new logo. They sent me a stinking JPEG. <sighs> That's what you get for trying to be funny. Anyway, so this is my unit. Something I want to make you guys aware of is that there is an update out there, a firmware update, like a full out update. Right now, my firmware version is .36. The .37 is the latest one, and I'll put a link on the description to that. Um, you can actually go, just go to their software download page, and I'll put that link there, and you're going to be able to see exactly when it was released, what it does, what the updates were. So, um, Kevin at the Discord, bro, like, not going to lie, Kevin from Mileside is, like, hooking it up. He's working double time to make sure that he's answering people's questions. So, Kevin, bro, appreciate it. You're doing a great job out there. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, going back to the, you know, to this thing, let's talk about fast sync, which is point number three. Point number three, fast sync. Well, for you to fast sync, you got to be able to enable here SSH, which is going to be once you log into your unit, you're going to go general settings, uh, system general settings, and it's going to be right on the first one. Also, while, while we're here, um, you got to enable, you know, that port 22, hit save, but make sure your system time is actually set up correctly too. Um, people mess that up all the time. 
Um, you know what I'm talking about? Like there's a ton of functionality in here. You can actually set up a VPN access right inside of your unit, which is like awesome. You can reboot from in here, you can do tons of stuff, but I digress. Let's make sure I can get, get you guys walk through this whole setup thing here. Um, what I will tell you is that you got to download Putty and I'll put a link to Putty and this is how you do your fast sync. You got to download Putty so that you can actually connect to your unit. From there, you got to figure out what the block you're in right now is at, which is I get it from Nebra's website. Go figure it, Nebra. Like they're doing something good. They're providing me with this little number here, which is the height. And basically the height just means like how far the, the blockchain has gone so far and what's, you know, what they're at. So right now we're at 1197117. Um, and you need that number for you to be able to actually plug things in. Um, and I'm going to probably scare most of you guys off. Hold on. I have a fast way of doing this as well. And I'll show you in just a minute. Um, so you do have these things. So once you get that code, that number from, you know, that website that I just showed you, you're going to go ahead and open, you know, uh, putty. You're going to make sure you're connected. You're going to go and type one of these lines at a time inside your command line to get this thing synced up. You're basically pausing the system. Then you're canceling any kind of sync. Then you're going to browse to where you need to connect the data to. Then you're going to go ahead and grab the info and then send the info up. Um, this last one, so docket exec minor, minor info height. Um, you want to wait about 15 minutes to do that one because that's like checking where is my um, my miner sitting at right now. And that will only happen after you've already grabbed that snapshot from Nebra. And you see these X's at the very end of the screen here. Those X's are going to get replaced with this lovely number right there, which is super small on your screen. So let me make it super big that right there. So that that's what you're going to grab to replace those X's with. Now, since the ones of you that are still sticking around and watching this video, I want to make your life easy. I really don't like the fact that this is complicated to set up and uh i'm a big believer in giving credit where credit's due and envy bit grab their website and put it on the screen so because they deserve the, the credit on this one so in the bit um a lot of their stuff like if you go to buy miners and stuff from them there um is in greek so it's all greek to me but they put together a little um piece of software that i will put a link on both the description as well as i'll, I'll i guess i'll do a quick link on screen so you can get right to it. But it's actually just a little tiny application that allows you to sync pretty easily. Um, what you're going to have to do is actually um, make sure that you have your SSH enabled the same way that I showed you before. So port 22, you click save on that. So you have access. But what they've done here is uh, pretty darn awesome. Uh, let me share my screen again. That would make it easy. Um, this is a little application. All you got to do is run this uh, update GUI and you punch in your IP address for your unit and you're good. It will run for a little Python uh, application. I mean, self-executable, which is awesome. It just like does all these commands for you so you don't have to worry about a thing. Double click it, IP, enter. Just make sure that the information in there is correct um, as far as the IP address and that you didn't change any of the login information for the, you know, the, the SSH portion of it. Other than that, I mean, this is the easiest way to go about it. Um, like I'm not endorsing them or trying to do anything like that. It's just a matter of I like giving credit where credit's due because these guys did a good job at making it easy for anybody to fast sync their mouse site units. I do like these guys. I'm actually pretty happy. My minted miner was down for a bunch of days while this one kept going. So yeah, good job, mouse site. You guys are doing it right. It's funny because they've been around the, the IoT market for a while, which people don't realize that. So that's something to be aware of. Like there are new miners coming out and I do have some news about that, but keep in mind that when you have seen new miners out there, what was the company doing before? Is it a brand new company that just applied for something and then now like trying to put together helium miners or are they a reliable company that have support that are able to actually stay behind the product they're putting together? So keep that in mind because that's really, really critical. Um, and like I said, I will have some news in regards to new miners shortly. Um, I'm gonna leave it here. I don't wanna make it a really long video because I need to get on a roll, getting more videos up, up and getting you guys information because that's what it's all about. Um, thank you again. If you haven't smashed the like button yet, go ahead and do so right now because it goes a long way and I'm doing something special for you. You guys are awesome. Give me a high five.
All right, so we are back. So real quick thing, um, yeah, it's been taking a while for me to get these videos up. My goal is to actually try to punch more out as quickly as possible because I've been, man, I've been neck deep into conversations with different projects, uh, neck deep into getting the new miner, the action branded miner out. So that's happening. There's a ton of stuff happening, but uh, most of I guess here is what I'll share that's even more important um, than giveaways or anything else like that. Um, so you guys drop something, you know, just do action giveaway on the comments. I'll do an NFT giveaway because I want to get some of those out as well. Um, high fiving. This is going to sound super silly. And you guys are like, why would he ever like high five somebody on camera? It's crazy. And people think I'm a little nuts. I'm a little nuts for even doing it. When you put your hand up and you go to do that to your, you know, to, to the screen, you're going to act like you're a kid, right? Like that's what kids do. It's like, bye, so-and-so I'm watching on TV. It's OK. Don't feel silly. If you want to be feel real silly, high five yourself in the morning. I know it sounds crazy, but do it. It's one of the hardest things. 50% of people can't look at themselves in a, you know, like in their eyes on a mirror in the morning. 50% of people, that's insane. So here's my encouragement to you. You got this. Markets suck right now. Things have not been going well, but you got this. And my goal is to try to encourage you enough so that you understand that you don't have to worry about uh, what other people are doing. You don't have to worry about what's going on in the markets. You got this. If some, you know, some little brown kid from a third world country has been able to make it where he's made it so far, you can do this. Seriously, I believe in you guys. When I say stuff like that, it's because I do believe in you guys. And I read way more than I should. Oh, no, I should never say that. Hopefully my kid never watches this video. But like, I actually look into weird stuff that people don't normally look into so phys physiology uh psych you know psychology of just how people work in general and when i say hi you know i want to give somebody a high five that just the act of lifting your hand up and high-fiving somebody makes you feel good because like think about it when you miss a high five what do you do you go again let's give it another shot because the act of doing it makes you feel good so when you wake up in the morning try this it's gonna feel super awkward like before you do it right as you go look at yourself in the mirror Try to give yourself a high five. It doesn't matter if you touch the mirror or not. Just lift your hand and do it. Just give it a shot. And this might be hard for a lot of you. Honestly, this might be really, really hard. A lot harder than people realize. And you might be sitting there going, that's stupid. No, it's not. It's really not. Just the fact that you're lifting your arm and doing that sets the tone for what's going to happen next. If you can't believe in yourself, how are you going to get through what's next? So my goal is to let you all know that I believe in you. Even if you don't believe in yourself right now, you'll get there. You'll get there. It's going to be all right. We're all in this together. Markets aren't doing that great when it comes to crypto, but hey, that's all right. If you're mining, like that's one of the reasons I love mining. It doesn't matter how much the price of any coin is. I still have the same amount of coins when I'm mining, right? And I want to make sure you all understand that there is a bright future on the other side of this, you know, bearish times. And just we'll, we'll, we'll make it through together. And you're going to see a lot of like altcoin season coming up. This is what happens every time there is any kind of fluctuation with BTC or Ethereum. People are like, oh, it's all about altcoins because, well, everybody's looking for profit. That's the real reason. And I just want to say, yeah, there's tons of profits to be made in other projects. And I'm going to try to bring you those projects and try to bring you things that you can actually earn passive income with because passive income is awesome. Sitting back and being able to actually earn is pretty sweet. And I'm um, a big fan of it personally, uh, which is why I have a bunch of, you know, miners all over the place and I'm trying to add more. And as I add more, I will share with all of you. So stay cool. What was his name? Uh, your friend Andy. He told me to say something. I did it on the last video. And I got I to gotta get the lingo down. That's what happens. You get old, you have kids, you start wearing, you know, Paw Patrol band aids and you're just not as cool anymore. It's okay. We'll get there. As long as you're able to high five me. Like, I, I really want people in the room to go, what is that guy doing? Yeah, like literally high five me and we'll end this video. All right, take care.